just like the analytics application, there's a there's a native app in the app store that you download, and that's where end users consume and experience the content that's being created by the publishers or by themselves. So, and then as it relates to the way the content is experienced, so you're gonna have the documents that are being published to me, shared with me, or that I'm creating, and. When you navigate it, you navigate it like you would navigate a, a multi-touch application, like Flipboard or something like that, except for, obviously, it's your content that you've pushed into this versus uh, random web content. So the navigation experience is very fluid and very oriented around the multi-touch experience. And then you see particular stories that you want to focus on. You can zoom in to a deeper level where you have the full content of all the, uh, the copy that's been written. Or most importantly, the ability to actually interact with the live analytic. So here I have the data embedded into this publication so I can have the editorial context and read and tells me what's going on and then as a user, I can come over and actually interact with the entire data set that's being uh, referenced in the editorial analysis. So it supports, uh, it supports all, of our, all of our visualizations and analytics can be embedded directly into the pages um, as well as uh, supporting video and images and everything else. So it really bring, lets you bring all these media assets, data included, together into creating a, a modern touch-oriented document that lives on the device. In addition to being able to create that magazine output, you can also take any PDF. So obviously there's billions of PDFs that exist across the world that are, that are in a way kind of outdated in terms of where people are gonna ex to download them and experience them. So, right, so this was a PDF that was generated from PowerPoint, and I can bring it through the Flow application and give it a very, again, a multi-touch oriented navigation experience, but then augment that static content, again, with live data, either placed directly onto the, the page of the PDF, and that's true of both uh, analytics and of videos, uh, or in a scenario where, um, where the slide or the PDF is full of content, I can have these uh, tappable areas that basically launch the associated media asset, whether it be an analytic or a video or an image, etc. So it allows companies and users to leverage content that they've already made, as well as to give them complete control over any visual aspects of how something's being presented, because you can use whatever design tool you're fluent in and make your PDF and then bring it through flow and have the, have the experience here on the device. The last thing that happens on the client is it manages versions. So if uh, in a scenario where I'm creating a report and I make that every week and the data changes every week, and instead of a workflow that's me making a PDF and then sending it in an email, and then next week I send you another one, and the next week I send you another one, and you have this process of I don't know which version you're looking at, but you have the right one. All that's managed organically through the application, so I would see all of my back issues here, and new ones are just fed directly to the user as a very, in a very publishing-oriented metaphor, where if you subscribe to The Economist, you just get the next issue delivered directly to you. It, it does the exact same thing. And then you have the entire back history of all the older issues that you can go back in time. So that's the that's the output in the end experience that the that the product is geared to generate. And then um, the next thing to look at is the actual publishing interface to see how a user creates one of these. So this is the new cloud product that we launched in uh, that we launched in July. That's what I'm logging into right now. So when a user comes in, right now all they see is the analytics application and that's the publishing tool that I use to create Roby visualizations to merge the view with the data that I'm, that I'm uh, visualizing. On Wednesday of next week, it'll, every user will get this new icon for the Roby Flow publisher. Again, because we really intend for every user to be able to take the, the visualizations that either they're making or that their data people, their BI department, et cetera, are creating for them and extend them and use them in this, in this way to, to, to leverage the insight to be able to create documents and reports and, and move those around. So the flow publishing process is a, is a very unique experience. Um, the goal is to enable anyone to be able to create this magazine so there's no development involved and it's a very templatized system 
where you're not worrying about layout and aesthetic design. If you think about how many thousands of Word documents are generated on a daily basis inside of a company. You don't want you know, someone in the finance department worrying about how something's going to look. They just put in the content that they want to say and, and associate it with assets that are relevant and then have the output basically magically look good for them. So this is the editor. So this is where the, the, the publishing process takes place. So every magazine has some, some base parts that, uh, that form the foundation of it. The cover is one. The cover is either dynamically generated by the title that you give the publication, or you can, in this case, I uploaded an image. I made an image in Photoshop and I uploaded that, so that's going to be the full screen cover. Every publication has a table of contents that populates itself as you enter in stories into the document. And then again, following a very publishing-oriented metaphor where the whole foundation is built on the concept of a story. And a story is a set of editorial, a headline, and any associated asset. And then those stories can be placed onto pages, and the pages are all completely templatized. So you can add a new page by clicking the plus button down here, and you see you have a wide variety to choose from in terms of the block layout of how many stories are going to be on a particular page. And then actually adding a story or editing a story is done just by double clicking in and this is the story editing page where you edit all of your body copy. So either you copy your paste or you type it in as you're generating it. And then stories can exist as one of four types. As a story that's uh, focused around a Romy visualization. This is probably going to be a little slow because I'm running over my phone. Um, an image, a video, or just text-based. So in the case of a, of a story that's designed around a Romy visualization, again, it gives me the, the predefined area of where the view is going to go. Typing in the headline is as simple as uh, highlighting it and saying sales go down, right? Sales go down 5%. And then I can reference my entire library of Romy analytics. So I just go to browse. Because it's completely integrated with the analytics product, I have access to every visualization that's been shared to me throughout my company by someone else that made it or that I made, et cetera. And you just choose that, and it'll, it'll place that dynamically into the page. Um, the same is true of, so you can see it gives me the little preview over here, and it tells me which quadrant on that page template that I'm working in and then here's the four other stories that I have. So this one was an image based story. We got uh, Rocky and Ivan. You can back out and uh, add video. Again it's done done fairly simply via YouTube or Vimeo. You just copy the share link and you paste it in there and it'll stream the video into the document. So that's that's essentially all you do. It's a very simple process of just adding in the content into these blocked out areas in the page templates. And then when your document's ready, you hit the play button and you click publish. And you specify who gets it, who doesn't get it, and you share it directly with your other Romy users. One other neat thing, again, leveraging publishing is it has a concept of section. So if you want to break your content into uh, you know, the North America section or the much like you do in a newspaper, you have sports and lifestyle, you can introduce this concept of a section. And the section actually dynamically associates any story that comes after it with that section. And you can see that was clearly manifested on the table of contents. So now I have sections over here. And underneath those sections, I have the stories that are related to it. And this is a neat little. Uh, highlighting feature where if you you want to call out a specific story out of the magazine to service it up at a high level of the table of contents, you can just select it from the list of stories. Because the stories are all stored as individual elements in the database, if I delete this page, it doesn't delete the stories. So I can add a different page template and come to these empty blocks. And then up here, I have all of the stories that I've written. I can just populate it back into that segment. So I see all the stories that right now are not currently placed anywhere in the document. And I can add them in pretty simply just by selecting them and it drops them in. Are you able that's to it? do tagging and indexing uh, on, on stuff inside it or build anything like that? Or is that something that'll come down the line? It's something that'll come down the line.
And that's... What, what about searching within the document? There's no search yet. Okay. Um, and then as I, as I mentioned about the, the versioning concept, so I made that publication and I, and I published it out. Let's say it's next week and I'm going to make an updated version of it with new data. Um, I just go into the details of that and I say create a new issue and I want the issue to be a magazine and I title it, etc. And then I can either have that next issue be something that I'm going to build completely from scratch or I can copy the layout of the previous one, or I can copy everything. So it says everything's gonna be the same, I just want the data to update, and I'm gonna change it from sales went down to 5% to, to reference whatever was the change, etc. So it's very easy, and then again, you saw how the user gets that on their device, it plays directly into it. And then the last thing we're showing is having um, having a publication on your device for individual consumption is great, but it's not going to take very long for people to be able to want to share these and drive meetings and conversations off of them. So we added a, uh, this is a very risky demo that I've been doing, okay. but I'm going to try it anyway. Because what I, I'm I at... Always, I can always stop here. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. What, uh... What the feature does is let me present to other iPads in the room, to other devices. Um, I'm going to try to do it to the iPad simulator on right. the computer, which is not necessarily a foolproof system. But essentially, I go to the publication that I want to that I want to drive the meeting off of. I flip it around. I click the share button. It gives me this audience button. I say, "Open up a connection." And so now it's basically broadcasting from itself. If this works, the other user on their device comes to this button, they'll see that session is being open, and they click on it, and from that point on, if you can get both of them, I have control and I'm guiding them through the, through the publication. This is where the demo is going to break down, because it's on the simulator, it's going to go very slowly. When it's device to device, it's almost instantaneous in terms of synchronizing the interactions. So I can lead my audience through the document. Uh, it's not like a WebEx, which basically transmits a recording of my screen to theirs. It actually puts the document on your device and, I, and, and transmits the interactions that I'm having with it. So, But this user can't interact with the document. It's basically frozen to him unless I, as the presenter, unlock him. And at that point, he can navigate and move through the context. You don't want people reading ahead when you're giving a presentation, as you, as you probably well know. Uh, but then at any time, the presenter can lock it, and it snaps it back to whatever uh, he was looking at. So it's not just mirroring the navigation. It also uh, tracks and transits the actual interactions with the, with the analytics. So as I go into particular chart and start scrubbing the data, it follows along so I can highlight and call out areas and, and pieces of the data that are worth, uh, worth highlighting. And then, of course, it wouldn't be any fun if it didn't give me a set of markers that allow me to draw on the screen and have it transmitted over. So that's the, that's the gist of it.